How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another episode. Today we're making sourdough donuts. This might be the ultimate donut, so let's go to the kitchen and check it out. This is a long overdue recipe. I've made sourdough donuts loads of times, but for some reason I never filmed it. You can find recipes for brioche donuts and regular yeasted donuts on my channel. But these things right here, they are special. The dough is a lot more flavorful and I chose a great filling to go along with it. It is dulce de leche, and I'll show you how to make it too. Super easy. But just look at that tear. Look at that texture. If you have a starter, you better make these. So let's get right to it and see what we need. For the dough, we'll need some white bread flour, water, an egg yolk, butter, salt, sugar, vanilla paste, and a sourdough starter. Flinty here is getting a good workout since I brought him back to life. But right, that's all we need for the dough. Of course, we'll need some oil for frying. I'm going to use sunflower oil, you can use any oil you like. To dust the donuts in sugar or not to dust, that is totally up to you. I like to do it, and this time it's going to be cinnamon sugar. You can flavor your sugar with other things, or you can just leave it plain. Or not use it at all, it's up to you. The filling as I mentioned earlier, dulce de leche, which translates to sweetness of milk I guess. It is sweetened condensed milk that's cooked in the tin, which turns it into a caramel kind of thing. It is crazy delicious. If you can find condensed milk tins without these pull tabs on top, that will be better. There is a chance of them exploding, but I've never had that problem. And we will cover these with a lid so it doesn't happen. As for the equipment, we'll need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a couple of chopsticks, they are great for flipping over donuts as they cook. Also, they are good for poking a hole so we can add the filling. And for the filling, we'll need a piping bag. For frying the donuts, you'll need a fryer or a pot, and something to fish them out with. A slotted metal spoon works great. Finally, a rack for cooling them down and draining them would be perfect. If you bake bread at home, I imagine you have one of these. Okay, let's start by making the pre-ferment. This will be a sourdough poolish. Equal parts, flour, water and starter. And the starter itself, my starter, is at 100% hydration. So in a small bowl, combine the water, the starter and the flour. Mix it until there's no more dry flour left. My kitchen is around 24 degrees Celsius, which is about 75 Fahrenheit, and I'm using room temperature ingredients. Once you have mixed up your pre ferment cover it up and leave it to rise. It'll take around 4 hours. You can of course make yours at a different ratio, make it rise sooner or later. This was getting close to being ready, so I started cooking the filling. Use a large enough pot so you can cover the tins with water. Remove the labels, because they will just make a mess. Ideally, you want to use the lid. For one, it's going to prevent the water from evaporating, so you're not going to have to keep topping it up all the time. Also, if the worst was to happen and the tins were to explode, well, at least you got a lid to cover them. But if they are kept under water, nothing will happen. Now, they will take a long time to cook, so make sure you start doing this early enough, so the filling is ready by the time the donuts are done. They will take three hours to cook, but they will also take some time to cool down. The water does not need to boil like crazy. As long as it's simmering, it's fine. So just keep it on low heat. And there's no need to look after these. As long as they are covered, just set it and forget it. I didn't get any evaporation of water from this pot, but of course do keep an eye on it. Right, so the Polish is ready. It's about tripled in volume, and a good sign of it being ready is that it started collapsing in the middle. You can kind of see a little valley forming. This is going to make some good donut dough. I'm using slightly warmer water than I normally do. It's because we want this dough to be nice and warm. Sourdough bread takes a long time, and the sugar in it will also slow down fermentation. Okay, so grab a large bowl, add the water, add the egg yolk, add the sugar, add the salt and the vanilla. Give it a good mix, you want to dissolve the salt and the sugar. That'll just make things easier down the line. You don't want to be kneading a gritty dough. Now add the poolish, give it a quick mix, follow that with the butter and the remaining flour. I chose to use water instead of milk in this recipe. I always make my starter with water and I'm just used to it, I didn't want to change it for the leaven either. If you want to use milk instead, Bear in mind that milk is only 90% water, so you will need to use more of it. But I can tell you for sure that the sugar, the butter and the egg yolk in this recipe are the main contributors to the texture and the flavor. So using milk instead might not make such a big difference. But of course, they are your donuts, so you can do what you want. And regardless of what you do, once you've mixed up all your ingredients, tip the dough out on the table and start kneading it. It is not sticky at all. So I'm using the regular kneading method and only 5 minutes of kneading are required for this. It's nice and strong, smooth and cohesive. Now we can pop this in a bowl and take its temperature. 26 to 27 degrees is perfect for this. We want it to be a little bit warmer. It will take a long time to rise anyway. And if your dough is cooler or warmer, it may take longer or less time. 
I'm going to cover this and give it two hours. And after the first two hours fermentation, or halfway to bulk fermentation, we need to give this a fold. The main purpose here is to degas the dough. To perform a fold, place the dough out on the table with the smooth side down, fold the edges over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started, then flip it smooth side up again and tighten it against the table. Back in the bowl it goes for another two hours fermentation. And you can learn more about folding and degassing in the Principles of Baking playlist. Now it's been about three hours since I started cooking the filling. Of course there's no way of telling if it's done or not just by looking at it, but after three hours of boiling, I guarantee you it's done. You could even cook it for two hours. That would make it more runny and less caramelized. I place the tins and the pot in my sink under running cold water. This will ensure that they cool down nice and quick. Okay, so it's been four hours bulk fermentation. Now we can divide this dough. This will make 12 small donuts. They are very filling, so I wouldn't suggest making them any bigger. Always weigh your dough before dividing it. You can never rely on the numbers in the recipe. As we mix it, knead it, handle it, we lose a little bit of dough at each step. So what is in a recipe will never match what you end up with. So always weigh your dough and then divide it. To make all these dough pieces nice and uniform, we need to pre-shape them after dividing. And just as with the fold, flatten the dough, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started, then flip it smooth side up, tighten it against the table, and that's your pre-shaping done. And now just repeat it 11 more times. After pre-shaping, you want to cover your dough balls and let them rest for around 20 minutes. Resting will relax the gluten and make it easier for us to do the final shaping. And the final shaping is very similar to the pre-shaping. Place the dough ball on the table with the smooth side down, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started, then tighten it against the table, you can lift it up and pinch the seam together, and that's your donut done. You don't want to shape it very tightly, the main purpose is to make them nice and round. And by the time you finish the other ones, you'll be a master at it. Place your dough balls on an oily tray so they don't stick. At this point I decided to check on the filling. I've always found it amazing how it changes. From a thick but still runny white substance, it becomes thick and caramelized. You really need to work to get this out of the tin. Drop it all into a bowl because we need to mix this up to make it nice and smooth, otherwise it's going to be lumpy. Then transfer it to a piping bag, leave it on the side for later. Now I can tell you that only one tin of this would have been enough to fill up all the donuts. I ended up using the other half for Bonoffi pie. So if you don't have any other projects, just cook one tin. Okay, let's move on to the final proofing of the donuts. And once again, I've placed them on an oiled tray so they don't stick. This will prevent you from distorting them as you try to pick them off the tray. The final proof will take around two to three hours, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. I let them rise for two hours, but I could have given them another half an hour. I was just running out of time. You do want them to almost double in size. These are puffed up quite nicely. The oil must not be too hot. 160 degrees Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit is enough. They will take around two and a half minutes per side. And if the oil is too hot, they might get too dark during that time. Place them in the oil nice and carefully. I prefer them facing in the same direction as they were sitting on the tray. I think this makes them puff up more evenly as they cook. As I said earlier, chopsticks are the perfect tools for flipping donuts. And if you flip them over and you start seeing a large bubble forming on the side, just use a chopstick to poke a hole in it. This will prevent your donuts from becoming misshapen. After flipping, give them another two and a half minutes. If you think the color is a little bit too light, we can flip them over again and give them 30 more seconds per side. Once they are done, take them out and place them on a rack to drain. I just love that bubbly surface that how the donuts get. I never seem to get that texture on my yeast donuts. Right, whether you dust them in sugar or not, that's totally up to you. But if you want to do it, I would say take the donuts out, let them sit for around a minute and then roll them in the sugar. This will ensure that they are cool enough to handle and also sticky enough to get coated in the sugar. After this, we want to let them cool down for at least 30 minutes. If you put the filling in too soon, it will become runny and soft, maybe come out the hole again. And of course, if you're not into caramel or dulce de leche, it's totally up to you. You can fill these up with custard or jam. I like this filling because it's super easy to make, very hands off. And I love caramel. Right, this next thing here, if you have one of these, well, great. It's a little metal basket that I never use for anything, but it perfectly fits two rows of donuts on their sides. And that makes my life very easy when it comes to filling these. And here's where the chopstick comes in handy again. Jam it deep into the donut and wiggle it around to widen the hole. If your chopstick is wider at the other end, you can turn it around and just poke each donut one more time. You definitely should keep this filling at room temperature before you want to fill the donuts. It is quite thick as it is. So instead of squeezing the piping bag from the top, move your hands down closer to the tip of it and squeeze it that way. Then you will get a sense of how much filling has come out. 
you can get quite a lot of this dolted leche inside these donuts. And that's about it. That's how you make sourdough donuts with dolted leche filling. This may just be the ultimate donut for me. If you have never tried making these, I encourage you to do so. I mean, just look at that. I'm salivating as I'm doing this voiceover. By the way, don't forget to check out the sourdough playlist for more awesome recipes. So what do you think these donuts? Have you ever made sourdough donuts before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click right here. Subscribe to the channel, click over here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.